This is Professor Des. This is part three, scale creation. So there's a few different options for how you can create scales using the items that you have in your database. One option is to use JASP. And so we'll get our practice data up here. You can use either one, your um, CSV Excel file or your um, SPS file. And if you look over here, there's this little plus sign, and if you click on that, you can create a column. And so there's two different options for how to create a column in here. And one is to use R code, and that's probably more advanced if you're familiar with R, or if you're comfortable enough, you can always Google search different things and come up with the code that's necessary to plug in there. Or you can use some of the simple functions they have for you and highlight this little finger and then click create column and then it's gonna say all right here's some options for how to create your new variable and so here's all the variables that are in your database over here to the left it's got some symbols over here and it's got some formulas over here min max log etc so you can do all sorts of funky stuff to create some new variables um, we're gonna do something simple and uh, one thing to keep in mind, sometimes it'll default to uh, different types of scales. If you want to create scales, you'll want to make sure that you see this little ruler. Right? So for example, if you click on those, instead of nominal, you want scale. And uh, let's see, let's try to make a age similarity scale or an age difference scale, depending upon which way you look at it. You could do, for example, Supervisor age, you just drag it into your little box, and then minus, and then employee age, you drag it in there. And so it's the equation set up for you in there, and then compute column. And you should get this confirmation, computed column code applied. And so from there, if you X this box, it'll get rid of that computation window. And if you scroll all the way to the right, there it is. So there is this new variable that we've created. We called it practice, and it's essentially an age different score between employee and supervisor. And so here they are. And as you'll notice, uh, most of them are positive. And so that essentially means that in every case, the supervisor was older than the employee, but that might not always be the case for everything. So you might want to apply a absolute value function or you could just go in there and manually look for it and then get rid of the negative signs. Right? But just make sure you're, you're looking at your data after you've created it. Another thing you can do is check your work. And so this is zero, which would say, or which would suggest that supervisors and employees for this specific case were the same age. So let's go check our work over there and find out if that's true. And indeed, that is the case, 27 and 27. So that looks good. So that's one way to start creating variables. And then if you wanted to, you could also start using functions to um, create your construct, right? So for example, there are uh, seven org structure items and you could use the formulas to create the average of these seven items in order to create the organizational structure scale. Or you could do it in SV, S, a CSV or Excel file, which to me actually is a little bit easier. And so this is the actual data file that is saved in your canvas that you can play around with. And you'll get the data files as a CSV as well as an SPSS file for the final data. And so let's just take a stab at creating an organizational structure scale. I'm going to hide some of these that we don't need. All right, so here are the seven org structure items, right? If you look here in the header, org structure one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So what you can do is call it something. Uh, let's call it org structure version two. Since it's, it's already been given to you, and I will give you the actual averaged item constructs, but you might need to create something different, right? Maybe you have a bad item. Uh, maybe you want to do something fancy like a similarity, different score, or whatever. 
Um, so it's important to know how to do this for those reasons. And so essentially all this is, is the average, so equals average parentheses of these seven numbers. Closed parentheses. And there you have it. And then you can hover over this little square in the bottom, click your mouse, and drag down to the bottom. And so now that formula will be applied to every single row. And so you can check our work, right? Because I've already created this variable. And so it looks like we got it right. We did the formula correct. 5 and 5, 6 and 6, 4.85, 4.85. It's all matching up as it should. Right, so you could create a, a new version of your file. You call it, I don't know, uh, final data version two. And then you could open up your JASP file using that new data file, right? And then you'd be working from a new data file that has uh, that newly created variable inside of it. Okay, but again, the data file I'm going to give to you, it's going to have the items. It's also going to have the scales created. But if you want to get fancy or do something unique, that would be how you could approach using some of those features.